be the last of the four talks. Uh, is this working? Okay. So this would be the last of the four talks, and after that, I'll be free. You won't be. Uh, okay. So I'll be uh, talking about one more aspect of quantum spin liquids, and uh, it's called the symmetric fractionalization. And this is again one of the outcomes of this long range entanglement present in uh, the, the ground state and uh, low energy excitations. Okay, so, before I start any question about the talk in the morning. Okay, so, if not let me just start. So, so far again I will use this uh, uh, Tori code model as a prototype and uh, discuss some of the things and how they uh, possibly tell you how they generalize. And uh, so, I will start if you like the last time writing down this thing with which you are now very familiar. You could write this other form also, and <coughs> for this talk, it does not matter. Uh, okay, and uh, so before uh, I start, let me give you a reference because this is more recent, and uh, uh, the co uh, reference that uh, covers almost all the things that I'll be talking uh, about symmetric fractionalization is this paper by uh, Andrew Essen and Mike Hermili. This is PRB. 2014. Okay. So, fine. So, let me summarize a few things, uh, uh, but using a different language. So, we found that there are two types of excitations primary excitations the electric charge and the magnetic charge. And we also found that there is a you can form a bound state, which is uh, these are bosons. It can also form a bound state, which uh, is uh, which I represent by some epsilon, and this is a bound state of electric and magnetic charges, which is a fermion. And also with that to complete, I need this identity, which is not an excitation at all. Okay, so this is just a ground state. Okay, with no excitations. So, this basically forms the four kinds of excitations trivial or non trivial in uh, this uh, liquid phase at low energies, the primary excitations. And uh, apart from uh, this, all these are generated by non local operations. To have an isolated electric magnetic charge or a uh, epsilon uh, or their composite, they need the string operators of different kinds. Okay? And so, so the question is what happens when I bring these two charges together and try to see uh, how they interact with each other. Okay? So, so, that is symbolically written as follows. So, of course, if I have uh, no excitations and I uh, that it's basically Bring two trivial uh, uh, cases, try to fuse them, I get the trivial state, okay? ground state. When I take an electric charge and try to move it around, which is uh, take it to a, uh, a placate, uh, take it to a site where there is no electric charge, it's just they get the electric charge back uh, at, the uh, at a different site. Okay? This is a symbolic ways of writing these things. Similarly, for the magnetic charge, okay. what happens if I bring two electric charges and try to put them together? So, let me draw. So, I have let me draw. I have electric charge here, I have electric charge here and try to put them together, which I can do using a sigma z, a sigma z variable acting here. What is the result? 
I annihilate both of them, right? Similarly, for okay, if I take an electric charge and a magnetic charge and try to bring them, so I have a magnetic charge here and try to bring it as close as possible to this electric charge, one of these plaquettes form something together, I get this epsilon particle. Okay. So, you can write down the table of all these things. Uh, so, let me just write down a few of these things which is easy to. So, epsilon into identity is epsilon, epsilon into m is E, epsilon into E is M and so on and so forth. Okay. So, these are known as fusion rules which basically tells you how these charges interact, these non-local uh, operators interact with each other and what happens when I bring them together. Okay. And this table survives even if I add perturbations to this, uh, such that this uh, uh, phase is not destabilized. As long as I am in this phase, this table survives. Even though the dispersion of this electric charge uh, and the magnetic charge in this system is uh, uh, flat, okay, it, the extra uh, terms like this magnetic field term that I introduced in the morning, it creates some dispersion of these charges. But, uh, so, those things keep on changing, but the fact that uh, these things are uh, obeyed, these fusion rules are still obeyed. So, this is a more uh, slightly shorthand way of writing things. Okay. So, so, so far again uh, the point is that I have not discussed the effect of symmetries in this uh, system. Okay. Uh, written in this way it have certain symmetries like translation, time reversal and things like that. So, I can kill translation by uh, putting uh, making this side depend uh, side dependent and making this plaquette dependent and all these things would again survive. I would lose symmetries, but all the things this entanglement etcetera uh, would survive. I can put a magnetic field, I can kill time reversal, uh, but still all the statements would survive. Okay. So, so far nothing I said actually depends upon symmetries. Okay. So, what if now I try to put symmetries into the system? So, we uh, saw one example which I quickly went through that in case of diamond models, the low energy degrees of freedom are dimers and when I do write down a theory in terms of these dimers, I get uh, uh, a theory which looks like when I set the uh, electric charge excitation uh, cost to infinity, whatever I, uh, uh, I got from this theory including the magnetic field, uh, I get the same theory here once I only have dimers. Okay. But once I remember that these dimers are actually made out of spins and uh, basically this is equivalent to okay. So, and then there are excited states. Uh, so, this I think about a G model plus some terms which destabilize the nail state and favors this local energy minimization. So, I have the singlet state here which is this and I have triplet states here. Okay. And this energy cost is ordered j this j and this other terms. Okay. So, when I realize this and try to bring back the spins 
and I uh, basically locally melt a dimer or excite this uh, break this singlet to form a triplet on this side so that I have basically mm, uh, two spins. I said that if we are in the deconfined phase, so these spins are like electric charges bringing these things back and if I if I am in the deconfined phase of this gauge theory, if I allow this uh, some kinetic energy to these spins, this they can propagate freely. On the other hand, if I am in the confined phase, this cannot propagate freely. Okay, so these spins are like the electric charges uh, of this gauge theory. Okay, and uh, uh, I created a spin one excitation. This is spin zero, spin one excitation. And I got two entities, which are really symmetry-wise not very different from each other. And the spin one gets separated into two spin halves, and each of these entities in the deconfined phase can carry away the spin half, which is very different from the spin wave. Uh, and this is where I cannot uh, break that spin one into two spin halves. Okay. So, here basically the spin quantum number, uh, the spin 1 excitation is getting fractionalized and this is only possible because the underlying Hamiltonian uh, is only possible when the underlying Hamiltonian all these terms that I want to add have spin rotation symmetry. It does not mean to fractionalize uh, symmetry or it does not mean to talk about symmetries when it is not present. Okay? So, I need those symmetries uh, uh, to talk about those symmetric quantum numbers and so and so forth which commute with the Hamiltonian. Okay? So, so basically uh, uh, I won't discuss this uh, problem, I might towards the end, but I will uh, start off with a, a much simpler problem not with spin rotation symmetry, but with translation symmetry. Okay? How can translation symmetry also get fractionalized? Okay? So, so, basically that is what I intend to do for most of this talk and hopefully I will be there. Okay. So, let us start. Uh, so, is there any question at this point about what I want to do? Okay. Good. So, we have to uh, make this a bit more mathematical uh, to be slightly more precise and unambiguous. Uh, so, basically uh, I have this whole system, let us let me define a few things. I have this whole system and I define areas in this system. Okay? I call this area A 1, I call this area A 2. You can find out a lattice version of this such so that uh, and assign the degrees of freedom which fall on this uh, boundary, you have an um, unambiguous way of uh, telling which uh, region they belong to. Okay? So, that is uh, something like I drew yesterday for uh, while calculating the entanglement entropy. Okay? So, now I would define operators, I just like I uh, use operators here and here spin operators. I would define an operator O and define a support of O. What do I mean by support? So, if the operator can only be defined locally in terms of this underlying uh, Hilbert space of spin operators, the sigma operators, only in terms of sigma operators that lie within this region, the way that you define. I would say that this operator O has only support in A 1. Okay? For example, uh, for the spin operators themselves, they reside on the bond. So, so they have support only on this bond. Okay? So, I'd write such an operator, I can always write such an operator like this. So, any state I can uh, uh, write it as a, a direct product of superposition of direct product of uh, state, uh, uh, degrees of freedom lying in A 2 and A 1. So, I also need to rest. Okay. This is A is the rest of it. Okay. So, basically they act 
this operator, if it is, suppose one spin operator, sigma operator in this region, and if it acts on a state which is like one spin here, tax trivially on it. This is, I'm making trivial statements, but uh, trying to put them in a mathematical way. Okay. Similarly, if the opera, uh, uh, this operator has some support only on A2, I would have uh, this block to be non-trivial, this and this block to be trivial, and so and so forth. Okay. So this is what I mean by support of things. Okay. So now. What do I mean? Uh, I can make the statement that the non-local operators, uh, the electric and magnetic charges are non-local operators in the following way, which is more precise. Any operator O, which has a finite support over a finite fraction of region, say A1, can only create even number of electric or magnetic charges. Okay. So, if there is a string operator lying in this, it can only create even number of electric and magnetic charges and that too within this region. Okay. Anything that creates an isolated electric charge, any operator that has to have support outside this region. Okay. And making the obvious statements slightly more mathematical. Okay, so that I can apply them more generally. Good. This is fine. Okay, so I'll try to go slow because we'll basically introduce things. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, which last statement? The chain operator. Uh, yeah. Means uh, uh, if we add the uh, co-operator in the A1 sector. Yeah. Then it has no effect on the A2 system. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, action of O, uh, which you uh, wrote down on the board. Yeah. Uh, only on A1, not yeah. on the A2. Uh, if it is a local operator, that's how I would define the support of that operator. Okay. Okay. So only it's. Uh, uh, limited on the A1 region. Yes. In that sense, yes. it's local. Yeah. So, in that sense, this is an operator which is like a product over uh, these four bonds, sigma x, which has support only over this region. Okay. Similarly, VP is an operator which has support only over this bracket. A string operator which runs from here to here creates electric charges here and here has a support in this extended region. Okay. Okay. Say that again. You, you cannot actually create an electric monopole because it all the string always ends at some other point. Right? Yeah. So, I can create it uh, in the following way. Suppose this is an open boundary condition. I take the string all the way. Uh, to the edge. And what happens at the end? So, I push it out of the depending. So, this is a tricky question. Depending upon the edge, I could uh, deposit at the edge or move it completely out of the system. Okay. So, you can sort of mess with the boundary conditions too. Yeah, right. right. So, yeah, uh, I think this is an uh, interesting issue. You should think what happens if I uh, end the edge like this, okay, rather than ending it like this. Okay, go and think what happens to electric charge and magnetic charge if I try to push it uh, out of this edge of two these uh, two different kinds of edge. Okay, good. So, so the uh, statement that these are non-local excitations is now more mathematical. That uh, to create this uh, uh, isolated excitations, I need a. Uh, hmm, I need a, a um, operator that runs all the way to the edge or something. It cannot have a support uh, only in an isolated region, all embedded within the system. Okay. Good. So, let me take one state like this. So, 
they take the ground state and act it with an electric st uh, operator, string operator with one end in region A and the other end in region B. Okay? So, it creates this state where one this is E 1 C 2. Okay? And remember, so if I drew this on a lattice, all these uh, wherever this passes through, I have to put uh, this uh, dual uh, gauge uh, fields to be negative. But here, so let me draw, I drew this picture before, but let me draw it again. Suppose I have a charge here and a charge, uh, maybe charge here. Okay. So, in the dual lattice, this must have a pi flux and this must have a pi flux. But all these things have 0 flux because this is negative, this is negative, this is negative. So, I have even number of negatives, this is 0 flux. Okay. And in the deconfined phase, remember we uh, bo boil down to a effective um, Hamiltonian, which is plus irrelevant terms. Okay, so there, putting the string doesn't matter. Okay, having the string negative doesn't matter. So, so in this phase, the string is actually uh, the more mathematical way of saying this is that you measure anything, any observable which has support, uh, any uh, operator which has support only in this region, only in region A. There is no way to detect this string. Okay. So, so basically, uh, which is uh, sort of evident when this other j x term, uh, the h y term. Sorry, what was it? H x term is zero. But rho tilde z does not. Let me write this. Okay. So when I put this H x equal to zero, it doesn't matter what I put uh, rho tilde to be. And I did not do the calculation, I just waved my hand saying that this survives when h uh, x is uh, small, uh, smaller compared to j. Um, you have to do a calculation that is where all these references would come handy. Okay? So, so, what happens is that as long as you are in the deconfined phase the, and this term dominates uh, the proceedings, there is no local observable that you can uh, measure which can uh, identify that there is a string or not. Okay. So, so any uh, uh, so so one way of putting this is that locally, if uh, you measure anything, you won't distinguish that it is this E one E two state. Okay, any operator you which has. operator which has support only in A would have the same universal behavior as the ground state. Okay. If it had uh, exponential, it, it is a correlation uh, function if it de uh, decayed exponentially in the ground state, it would still decay exponentially in the ground state and so and so forth. Okay. So, that the colloquial way of saying that is that the string is invisible. Okay. You cannot measure the presence of this string. Okay. So, fine. So, so that is what I uh, uh, want to take this uh, state E 1 uh, E 2 and try to understand what happens if translation is a symmetry. So, this all these things are same and I want to act on this state with translation.
again, infinite system, I have spe uh, sent the boundaries to infinity. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it would just go into some ordered state, and uh, so remember, yeah. So, so this term starts predominating. I can measure uh, this correlation function, and would see that this is different from this correlation function. Okay. So. Okay. So any more question? Because th these are things that are sort of new uh, ideas, calculations are not again very uh, difficult, not at all difficult. Okay, so fine. So, let us try to uh, answer the uh, ask the question, there is a translation symmetry written in this form and what that means is that I have two operators translating you know, one by unit in x direction, by unit in y direction, those are denoted by T x and T y and clearly that is a symmetry if these are independent of sites and plaquettes, this is the symmetry of this system. In other words, okay. that is So, I also uh, wrote the ground state also the Dipteman wrote the ground state that is this okay, which is okay. so assignment take this ground state and prove that it is translation invariant okay. I can prove it uh, naively by drawing this loops it contains all loops with equal superposition. So, it has to be translation invariant. Okay. So, how does the sigma operators change under translation? So, T x sigma uh, sigma l a uh, i goes to sigma a i plus x hat. Okay. That is how it changes, it just translates things we already know how it happens. Okay. So, the ground state is translation invariant, what it means is that vertically And again, you can show from this uh, picture that it is equal superposition of loops is that it is a zero momentum uh, 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 eigenstate, okay? because if you shift it by 1, all the loops get shifted, but you have all the composition of loops. So, it is just a grid. Yeah, so this k has to be 0 okay, for ground state. Generally, it is not 0, right? Okay. So, for this ground state which is uh, equal superposition of loops and I think the picture uh, is very useful here, you have this equal superposition of loops, you shift it that picture by 1, so again the same equal superposition of loops, you do not gain a phase anywhere. Okay? So, so, this is what it is, so the ground state is just this. So, how do I get this? E 1 E 2 state. So, E 1 E 2 is equal to this string operator x starting from 1 and ending in 2 on to ground state. Okay. And now, if I 
act with this. I want to find out how translation acts on this state. So, T x and this we already know is a down state. So, you have to know what this is. Okay, but that is again okay. I know how so x 1 2 is product of sigma z upper sigma sorry is should I write that as z 1 2 yeah maybe I should write that as z 1 2 because in the Dittiman convention because it is a product over sigma z. starting from 1 going to side 2. Okay. So, in, so, I know that uh, somewhere I wrote how what happens to the sigma operators. So, the electric charges just shift by 1, the end just shifts by 1. Okay. That is what happens. But now notice that is a again uh, I am acting this symmetry on this non local operator. Just like I try to write down this non local operator in terms of local plus a gauge field, the same question I would uh, now ask can I write this operator in terms of local operator three parts one how it acts on this, how it acts on this and how it acts on the string. That is the question I would ask. Okay. That seems to be a convenient thing to do okay. and that also te would tell us give the answer how symmetry acts on these non local objects with when they are alone. Okay. So, I do not think I need this anymore. So, I will try to write down the effect of this operator in terms of three parts T how it acts on 1 T E string 1 1 2 x and T E Okay, that's my T operator. I want to write it like this. Okay. So the part of the string that's lying in A again only has support in A. Okay, so I can break up this, call this whole thing. This thing, this has a support only in A one. This part of the string only has support in A and this thing this mu operator and the part of the string within A 2 is only support in A 2. Okay. And said that this is a physical operator it is some product of uh, sigma z in this region. They said that this is a physical operator. So, you should not be able to distinguish that any effect of that physical operator in that state within this ground state uh, within this excited state just like this in this deconfined phase some correlator n particle correlator. Okay. So, this has to be trivial identity it is uh, whatever uh, happens uh, in the ground state and the ground state has a 0 momentum. So, it just provides some uh, this identity. So, this you can as well neglect this part. Okay. So, it is this point clear why I can neglect this string part. Yeah. So, as I said that there is no physical observable statement okay, which has only support in A. 
which can distinguish that in a qualitative way uh, that this the state that you are working with is a two electron charge uh, two electric charge state and not the ground state okay and this part of the operator has only support in this region okay so it's a physical operator it's some product of sigma uh, z's okay so if i calculate the expectation value if i operate it with this side and this side with electric charge i shouldn't be able to distinguish it okay if i operate it on one side with the trans, uh, translated operator it would just give me a e to the power ik type of factor but that factor for the ground state is zero uh, this k is zero so that factor is one okay so that's like an identity operator okay fine so basically the translation operator in this state acts like this piece then this trivial piece and then this other piece okay so it sort of breaks up into two region uh, in this state okay this i have argued but i cannot give a mathematical proof for this so this is still so since we are trying to make this more mathematical let me point this out this is an assumption okay we don't know a very hard way to prove this when we generalize and this assumption is called the assumption of symmetry localization that's the term that's used in the community i think michael mili and andrew essen started this actually you know yeah so these are finite fractions so these are finite fractions of things if you separate this by two lattice spacing and then change slightly these numbers would change but you are all, all these spacings are macroscopic spacings in terms of this lattice length scale so the uh, the uh, asymptotic features would not change uh, in this region yeah right right it's not equal to exactly equal to only the asymptotic features are same yeah yeah all these sizes yeah all these sizes uh, suppose you are considering e to the power 1 and e to the power 2 there is a sizable difference but when i consider e to the power 100 e to the power 101 the sizable difference is small uh, okay asymptotically Okay, where is it? Okay, fine. So, the, so, so this is uh, what it is. I cannot give you a, a harder proof of the statement that symmetry should act like this. And I think I can actually give you a slightly uh, distorted version where this proof is not. Uh, this assumption may not be valid. Think about things like reflection and things where uh, this. So, suppose there is a reflection between. and this so this gets mapped to this and uh, vice versa it's harder to use this form of symmetric localization okay so and you have to uh, basically work harder but in case of translation if i think about this it just gets shifted slightly and it just gets shifted slightly and still there is no overlap so a is still zero all these things are valid and also a1 prime which is the shifted a1 a2 is zero and a1 prime a2 prime is zero all these things are valid okay good
Is there any more question about this? Oh, I'm running late. Sorry. So what happens if I do this? What is this operator? So I translate it by x by one unit, y by one unit, then back. So this is identity. That means that if I take any, so let me call this some operator O, uh, x y, x bar, y bar and operate x y x bar y bar operate it with alpha okay good so now i want to apply the same kind of reasoning to that operator okay so let me do this in some detail through okay, which part should I erase? Let me start by erasing all this. Good. So so it's a physical state. I can write this state all in terms of sigma operators. So, it should be identity. Okay. So, so let me write a few steps which would be evident now use that this is continuation of this Now, this T1 x and T2 x uh, have only support in A1 and A2, okay? and we already know what that means. That means that T alpha E 1, T beta uh, E 2 always commute, yes, there is no overlapping operators. One spin is defined here, another spin is defined here. They always commute. Okay. So all these things has to be revisited when I think about fermions and things like that. It is okay. So all those are assignments. Which one? So these? No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, so these are using this, the thing that I raised T x or T alpha is equal to T alpha 1 e T e alpha 2 with this middle part being identity. Uh, sorry, I should use this brackets maybe, but you understand, right? Those are not commutators. 
okay. But the fact that they commute when there is a comma in the middle, it's a commutator. Okay, so uh, so the fact that they uh, commute, I can write that whole thing as follows: T x. Let me write it out. I have taken all 1s in here and all 2s here and I am allowed to do to that because these operators have support in different regions. Okay. So, this operator acts only on this charge this part and this operator acts on this part. Okay. So, what does that mean? The general answer that the product of these two operators has to be so this I now can call this part I can now call O x y x bar y bar acting on 1 and this part I can call O e 2 x y x bar y bar acting on e 1 e 2 giving me back e 1 e 2. Okay. So, that is the symmetry localization uh, form for this operator. This is the symmetry localization form for the translation operator. Okay. Now, this thing has to be identity the product of these two things have to be identity. So, basically each of this at most can be x y phi i is a real number okay, such that Yeah, so both of them have to be uh, the product of them have to be identity. So, they better be uh, modular 1. Okay. So, you can ask why is it one is not one fifth and the other is not 5, because there is no distinction between these two uh, charges. Whatever one uh, one of these operator is, the other has to be uh, the same. So, that way they can only be phases. And more than that, the product of this, the sum of these phases must be 2 pi, and this uh, for by the same argument, this theta is must be same, because there is, uh, there is really no distinction between this charge here and this charge here. So theta one and theta, uh, sorry, phi one and phi two can be different, uh, cannot be different. Okay. So phi one plus phi two has to be. 0 or 2 pi, you can take 2 and pi does not matter and phi 1 has to be equal to phi 2. Okay. Because, sorry, yeah, the, then this whole question is meaningless, right. If there is no translation symmetry, there is no meaning to looking for what is the effect of translation symmetry. Okay. Yeah. Super, why do you need the E subscript for the T? Huh? Why do you need the E subscript? Uh, oh, I will come to this. Uh, why? I could do this for the magnetic charge. More importantly, I could do this for epsilon. 
it's not necessary that these two are, uh, all these things are same. So I want to keep track that I'm working with e, e, E1, E2, and not epsilon1, epsilon2 uh, state. I could repeat this exercise for this for muons, the bound state of E and M, the epsilon particles. Okay, I'll come to this uh, point in a moment. That's precisely why I want to write all these things in great detail. Okay. So, so let's take the case phi. Let me call this phi. Then, so this phi has to be zero or pi. Then there are two possibilities. Okay. Maybe I should put e here also. Okay. Uh, this is zero or pi. Okay. So then operator x y x bar y bar is e to the power i phi which can be plus 1 or minus 1. Okay. There are two possibilities. So, so let us try to understand what this means, what this phase means. Okay. And this all of us know uh, from uh, quantum mechanics one or two course. So, and think about the Landau level problem. Okay. I take an electron, move it around a uh, closed loop which is what I'm, uh, this operator is doing, right? Taking this charge and moving it around a closed loop, square loop, not a circular loop. Okay. So, if I say that the end result is e to the power i phi, what does that mean? It is seeing a flux, a magnetic flux, right? whose value is either 0 or pi. Okay? So, so basically uh, depending upon whether this number is, is uh, 0 or pi, it either sees a flux or it does not see a flux. The symmetry allows both these possibilities okay? as it should, it should tell us what are the different possibilities. Okay? Now, there is an, another important thing. Suppose for if you have four particles okay, like this 1, 2 and again 3 and 4. Okay. For this two, let me just draw this. So, there is a string also I and mean, it is sort of silly to draw strings because the strings can be between any two uh, things. Okay? Let me do it. So, so, now you can act the translation operator uh, 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 this way and, but you can show that if for uh, all of this the value of phi has to be same. Okay? If the value of phi is different, say suppose for this particle the uh, value of phi is pi, for the rest of it uh, the value of pi, uh, the value of phi is 0. Then I can just take this and this and bring them together and fuse it and I would get an identity state and then the product of this is 1. Uh, uh, yeah, for one of the particles and it is minus 1 for the other particle and it is a ground state. So, that violates this rule that T x into ground state is ground state. It would give me minus of the ground state. Okay? So, this phi 
is a characteristic feature of all E particles. Okay. Okay. If it is zero, it has to be zero for all E excitations. It is, if it is uh, pi, yeah. You have a question. Thank you. Now you have four boxes. Yeah. If you repeat the whole calculation, you yeah. get that the phase. I mean, you have four phases. You add the four phases to two pi, so yeah. phase can be even pi half. Say that again. The phase can be pi half instead. No, of no. But the elementary excitations are e. So, uh, so if I take phi equal to pi by two, and repeat the same calculation with two particles, I don't get. Uh, it's okay, not so consistent. Okay. You get the yeah. small. Okay. So that's why I want to go from the smallest onwards. Uh, so, by the same count, this fluxes over some the smallest loop that you can make. In yeah, the it uh, does not matter, uh, you can distribute the flux over a loop, all I want is the total winding. Okay. But, so, this should be for instance, I can just take a one loop and a one placket, I can yeah. take 10 so placets. This, this is for one loop, because I this translate by unit. Yeah. Any more question? Uh, when you construct these things sequentially, so you construct one string like this and then one string like this, yeah. right? What if you do one string like this and then the other string like this? Yeah. Assignment, the homework problem. Okay. As I said, that it is silly to draw the strings, it does not matter. As so, I the said, crossing does not yeah. change the phase of? Yeah, all are E particles, it just uh, all strings commute with each other, it is all sigma z operators. Okay? So, as it as if uh, I can uh, remove the strings, okay. But so coming back to Carlos' question, uh, I would not be uh, able to do that if this were uh, one was a magnetic particle, one was an electric particle, or a combination to form an uh, epsilon particle. That's why it's important to keep track of various things. That's the reason why these E's are there, uh, okay. So. Any more question? Okay, fine. Good. Okay, I'm almost done with this. And let me explain to you the zero flux and pi flux state. So basically, uh, that means that if I move the electric operator. Uh, Around this uh, the unit loop, I get see a zero flux here and a pi flux here. That's what the symmetry just symmetry does not tell you which possibility is taken. Symmetry tells you all the possibilities that are allowed. Okay, even though the, here is a, 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 a point. Even though the a action of this operator, the uh, operator O x y x bar y bar on the total system containing even number of electric charges is always identity. This acting on a single charge which is a non-local object can be identity or minus of identity. Okay? And this phase is allowed and when I replace identities by such phases, okay? so these are what are known as projective representations of symmetries. Okay? Just like I mean, what you have in a uh, Landau level problem. When you choose a gauge, you just uh, have to, uh, uh, when you implement the symmetry, uh, when you uh, act with a symmetry operator, you have to do a gauge transformation. Okay, that allows this kind of phases. Okay? So, so why is it related to symmetry fractionalization? That is the last bit I want to address. Okay? Any question before I start erasing uh, things? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So because I could split this operator, and this has support only in region A1, and this has support only in region A2. Even though there is an intermediate region, and I said that this uh, individually, these operators are non-local. 
still I can uh, uh, sort of forget about this middle part. That's why, uh, and if I look individually at these operators, it looks like it's localized here and here. That's why it's lo symmetry localization. There is, I don't think there is a proof of this. Deconfinement. Huh? Is that a statement or mathematical statement on deconfinement? Yeah, so it's related to deconfinement. Uh, but the fact that, as I said, suppose you think about reflection symmetries. Uh, so there is a reflection axis like this, and after that, this gets mapped to part of this, and this gets mapped to part of this. So uh, there, the string uh, also uh, part of the string gets overlaps from uh, uh, from different regions. So it's very hard to uh, see that this is true, uh, that you can throw away this middle part, the string part. It's, I mean, practically, it's almost always uh, true, but it's hard to prove there. Here, it's sort of easy to not prove, but motivate. But that's the point. OK? I'm not in this talk. Uh, yeah, but I can certainly. Is it uh, what is the assumption you make uh, on uh, uh, zero or five plus? Uh, you, you mentioned that uh, you only have a plus one or minus one. Right? Yeah. Right. So for this, so so why is this plus or minus one? Can we have other possibilities? That's a question. Uh, so yes, uh, but here the the fact that it's plus or minus one is tied to the fact that the electric and magnetic charges are ising. Okay. So that's why I cannot make the gauge field u on. So if I had to take the root, the the root of uh, trying to get a chiral spin liquid, I had to start with u on charges. Okay, so then I can make this thing uh, to deviate from zero or pi. Okay, and break time reversal symmetry and uh, make it uh, deviate from zero and pi. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah Z two. That. Uh, uh, yeah. So basically, the underlying fact is that I wrote these things. With these being Ising, so then the gauge redundancy is mu going to epsilon i, mu, where this epsilon two can be only plus or minus one. That's the origin. Yeah. I mean, you have four ground states, so in fact, this e times times e two is yes. valid for all the four ground states. You're always ahead of me, and I'll <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. So, uh, okay. Good. Okay. So, so I want to explain these two first before going to this question. So, um, what are these? So, electric charges are um, basically uh, uh, seeing this flux, uh, zero flux, and pi flux here. And we already actually know the answer where these things can be realized. So let me just write down the model once more, and you would uh, see the answer. OK? So these are two possibilities. If I have j e, j m, both greater than 0, then in the ground state, there are no magnetic charges. 
okay no electric charge is true so then in the, uh, that case if i create two electric charges and move them around in this closed loop of okay this see, there is no magnetic charge so it does not see any phase okay so that's this possibility okay so j m j e okay so in this with this minus signs this is the region where this spin liquid is realized okay and this is what kedar was yesterday kedar is not around kedar was trying to point out this is the even ising gauge theory okay that's just a name for this uh, with this kind of statistics okay on the other hand if i make this to be negative which is like this region the ground state has one magnetic charge per site and then if i try to move a electric charge around the plaquette see this magnetic flux okay and then as we are now experts in dealing with it gains a pi phase that's this possibility okay so when you put symmetries uh, the things that we already know becomes very clear for this uh, system which we can solve exactly so this is cell so call this plus 1 e okay and minus 1 e okay so i can repeat the same exercise with magnetic charges it is all these things put everything in the dual lattice and do everything for the magnetic charges okay it get the same kind of results okay and i don't know where uh, these phases go so here it's plus 1 magnetic okay and here it's plus 1 magnetic because there are no electric charges here so the magnetic charges goes around in the ground state and doesn't see a flux electric flux here it's plus 1 electric and minus 1 magnetic and here it's minus 1 electric minus 1 magnetic so in principle i should write down also for the identity and the e charges identity is always plus 1 okay and again assignment proved that phi e is phi e plus phi m okay okay so so now i have how symmetry acts on any all my low energy excitations okay and that basically fixes the low energy structure of this theory okay so you might think that there are four phases but actually there are three okay can you figure out which two are same so these two us huh? yeah so can you say why they are same no uh, there is a simple answer simpler answer electromagnetic duality there is no distinction between electric charges and magnetic charges you can just call them reverse so this phase and this phase are just the same phase it's just name uh, that you assign to them in one you call them electric charge and the other magnetic charge both are bosons so it is uh, is no physical distinction between those two states okay so there are actually three spin liquids this this and these two together okay and now comes the ground state okay so 
Flux should be it is. So let's so let's introduce this. Okay, this is the signs with this notation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you before coming here. I mean, uh, the fact that you say that the uh, two phases are identical. Yeah. Does it mean that they are identical also in the sense that you had a path that you can go from sorry, one yes. state to the other state yes. without closing a gap? Yes. If I come out of this plane, I can do this. Right. And you cannot do it for any other two? Phases. No. Okay. It Thank you. Has. Okay. So basically, turning something like this magnetic field, etc., I can continuously go from this phase to this phase. Okay. I think I actually know uh, more uh, concrete way. So I turn on a magnetic field HX, okay, and uh, uh, you uh, then continuously uh, change the magnetic field, and I think you can go to this other phase. Uh, maybe that's true. Yeah, I'm less sure about that uh, than when I started out telling this, but you can do this. Okay, so so on a so on a uh, for this uh, to be plus, what you start out to, so remember we already have this minus signs. So for this to be plus, so S M equal to plus one, then you start with this all up state and act with 1 plus S E into A S, sorry, bad choice, P, 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 P. These are the ground states. Okay? For P M to be minus one, it's the same ground state, but you don't start with an all-up state. Start with this state. Okay, so every alternate row down. So let me call that. Those are the states that you, uh, st those are the ground states on an infinite plane for this uh, different phases. But for these uh, phases, you can just rearrange and it's the same uh, wave function. So now, trying to put it on a torus, as just apply this loop operators on. Um, uh, uh, along the loop of the to uh, two loops of the torus, but now you have to be very careful. Things start depending upon if you have, uh, if you start with odd odd uh, uh, sides. Uh, so if the number of plaquettes in this direction, so let's call this n x and n y. 
and if you try to fold it to form a torus. The degeneracy is not always uh, 4, but there might be accidental degeneracies uh, coming from uh, uh, whether it is odd odd even even odd even and odd odd. Okay? These are things that Mike Hermley and Andrew Essin uh, looked at very carefully. Okay? So, those are of course, accidental degeneracies. They go away when you put in other perturbing terms. Okay? Good. So, I have uh, of course, uh, uh, some more things to say, but I think I will stop here and take questions. Yeah.